All right, welcome guys to today's Step in STEM session. As you might have guessed, I will be the one presenting because the goal of Step in STEM, we did this last year, and we're doing it this year, we're doing it every single year. The goal is to have as many voices of youth represented. Everyone who's interested in any topic uh, you know, that falls in, you know, politics or science and technology, that is our goal here to promote your voice. So Angus, yeah. my man Angus here, he uh, he's obviously very interested and he wants to share that interest with you guys and all of us today. So without further ado, Angus, and for next session, think about what you got on you. Next session, the session after that, next session after that, all year long, every Monday, the stage is here for you. Every for Monday. You, for you, for you, for you, for you, for you, okay? Without further ado, Angus, yep. stage is yours. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry if this presentation is a bit rick rackety. I did not know I was presenting yesterday. So, what is communism? So, the communist school of thought has been around for a lot longer than its manifesto, which is the most popular or the most common view of communism. It's been around of collectivization even before history. Think about tribes uh, in a community. That's okay. That's not communism, but it's an early form of what might the later develop into communism. So the Oxford definition from the dictionary is a theory or system of social organization in which all property is owned by the community and each person contributes and receives according to their ability and needs. So a statement you might find just uh, to the, to what to their ability and needs, basically to the extent that you can do something. And therefore, you will get. And therefore, you will be given what you need. That is more or less a common a definite definition of communism. Now, there are different types of communism. There's Marxism, Leninism, uh, Maoism, all these different isms. But they're all different views of communism. But they're all more or less under the big umbrella definition of communism. And but socialism is, socialism is a bit different. Okay, so. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't have a PDA, PhD, I'm not, a, I'm no, uh, I haven't graduated from anything yet, from like, uh, technically, pre, uh, pre, uh, how am I going to, uh, a primary school, and preschool, technically, so, that's my degree. But socialism is a bit less on the left. Communism is really the most, not the most extreme, but it's what you're going to find on the biggest on the left. So you can say that France, it's a socialist state, for example. It's where it has some it has, has some ideas on the left, but it's not fully full blown communism yet. Yeah. <laughs> That's not my political views. Somebody else's. What about in practice? Anybody know some communist states? China. China. In part. China. In the beginning. In the beginning. Oh, I'm getting into that later. What else? Cuba. I'm not going to Cuba. Vietnam. Cuba is communist though. Yeah. Vietnam, yeah, yeah. Any other big communist states in the 20th century? Colombia. Colum yeah, yeah, sure. Any, any, I'm looking for like a big country. There yeah. we go. It took a while, but the most famous communist nation. Yeah. And who, who's the biggest leader when you think of the USSR and communism? No, no, that is Stalin. 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 Who likes Stalin? Who likes Stalin? <laughs> okay, that's, oh, a, no that's, a joke. Hands, that's right? a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Joseph Stalin. This guy. So, this guy ruled from about 29 to, I forgot the, when he died, but when he died, he died of a brain aneurysm because no one would help him. And so, what he did was he created Stalinism. And Stalinism is a certain view of looking at communism, which is one of the most famous views. So, you can really sum up uh, Stalinism as a different to communism in a few different ways. One of them would be communism in one country. So it's the idea of having, instead of dividing up the Soviet Union, for example, into multiple different little states, keeping all under one big Soviet in Moscow. So that's kind of a, and that's what Stalin did, opposed to the Trotskyist uh, perhaps point of view, where you should have a more divided nation. Another idea would be the industrialization under Stalinism. So that'd be his five-year plans. And except, oh, so what his five-year plans did was take money an excess of money from the selling of the of agricultural goods to then invest in industry. Because Russia at the time, or well, Soviet Union at the time, was incredibly, uh, uh, had an in incredibly poor industrial capacity. If you're, uh, they've got maybe one or two cents. Uh, and so he goes from this, he takes, and 
uh, yeah, and multiply your plans, where you industrialize the country incredibly successfully, I might add. Successful, yes. He took, he, he took Russia, he took the Soviet Union, sorry, from a very entirely agricultural base to a less agriculturally based economy. Do you have a question? You sure? Well, Lenin, Lenin was around for about three years. Really? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So Lenin more or less arrives in Russia in 1917. He goes revolution, and the and the Soviet, the Politburo, takes power in 19 October, Nove November, technically it's a long story they use a different calendar in 1917. And so what happens is that Lenin then dies in 1923 from I think a stroke. And so he's very four years. Uh, no, he's got about five years. And during those entire during that entire amount of time, he's in a, he's getting weaker and weaker, and weaker. And it's also in the midst of civil war. He influenced the country as it went on, but he had very little effect of Ru on Russia at that time. Another part would be the cult of personality. You might say this, for example, in certain images of him, it looks like a very happy guy. He was not a very happy guy. Uh, he became an image for the for the Soviet people of public Stalin. He is, there's multiple propaganda posters, I don't have any on here, of course, where it's, thank you, Papa Stalin, thank you, just, thank you, Stalin, for a happy childhood, in a very Russian way. There was a poem, yeah, I'm, we had to study that in his geography class, yeah. where it was, um, thank you, Stalin, for a happy upbringing, the children of the Soviet Union are grateful for your amazingness. Hmm? Another example of what he did was he had hell power using terror and a police force called the NKVD, which is in Russia and I can't pronounce it. If anyone's trying it, please don't. <laughs> Where he would scare his opponents and either make them leave into exile or send them to Siberia uh, in order to decentralize power around him. Uh, another few ideas of him, I'll just go over quickly, is the Kolkoj, which is an agricultural a center where little communities in, say, the middle of nowhere in Russia will uh, centralize, and then the benefits from that can then be used to put into the industry, as I talked earlier about this said earlier, about the five-year plan. And then he also believed firmly into this, in the spread of communism and that Europe should become communist, that the world should be communist. And he was partially successful with Eastern Europe. And then finally is the Politburo, where it's the idea of having uh, of having a little maybe a group of 10 or less people where it can change, of highest members of the Communist Party. So the first Politburo was made by Lenin with Lenin, Stalin, Trotsky, and a few other people that would later disappear. <laughs> yeah, suddenly Stalin. They slipped into this, they, 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 they slipped into Soviet Russia. <laughs> Next one, China. <laughs> Communism. This is, um, I... I did not make this slide. Okay, anyone know who this is? Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong. <laughs> the name has changed over time. It's gone from Mao Zedong. Mao Zedong. So I've got a whole thing in here because I watched two YouTube videos about it. So <laughs> it's the Chi Let's start with the Chinese part. We're gonna have this going on in the background. So if you're if you've got strobe if you've got problem with like strobe lights, then you should probably leave. <laughs> so under in the Chinese government, it's very confusing where. It's the state, the, the state is less important than the party. The party is above all. So um, it's not Xi Jinping, but well, it is Xi Jinping. Well, this isn't Xi Jinping. But Xi Jinping is chairman of the party. Well, that's, that's more important. Is that is not chairman of the party, sorry. He is, Mao Zedong was chairman. He was general secretary of the party. And that was seen as above president of China. So is there a president of China? Yeah, Xi Jinping. Wait, 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 Xi Jinping, oh. sorry. He's both. He's also head of the army. Yeah. It, it, it's centralized where... What it, yeah, po popular democracy is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so typically, what you, what you what you used to find in China before this guy ran again, well, not this guy, but Xi Jinping ran again, was that you'd have 10-party rule of the chairman of the party, where you'd have one guy rule for 10 years and then change. So you see Deng Xiaoping, I don't know the rest of the names. And so you'd have 10 years as chairman of the party. Uh, not chairman, sorry, general secretary of the party. General secretary just means leader of the party, came from Stalin. And Xi Jinping recently changed that in 2022, when instead of going, leaving, at, leaving it at 10 years, he went on for another term. He's currently at, I think he's going on for 15 years.
He's not currently at the team. He's going for that. He could. There's technically he he in 2018 he removed the removed the law stating that you can only rule for 10 years. So now he will keep on going for as long as he can until he doesn't want to or until until something changes that. Okay. So one thing that's confusing about China, why it's communism question mark, is because you find that China seems very very capitalistic in essence. In fact, if you went to China re until recently, about in the twenty in the early two thousands and nineteen nineties, nineteen eighties, you find that China seems to be even more capitalistic than the U.S. How can that be? It's the Chinese Communist Party. Well, let's talk about a certain fellow called Deng Xiaoping. I'm probably butchering that pronunciation. I don't care. And he said, he, there's this quote from him. It is, no matter if it is a white cat or a black cat, as long as, long as it can I'm sorry. And no matter if it is a white cat or a black cat, as long as it can catch mice, it is a good cat. And what this means is that for him, it doesn't matter if it's a democracy or an authoritarian party or communism, as long as it is effective and making money, it is a good cat. Isn't it kind of like what else is? I don't care about principles and whatever works. Yeah. More or less. And also, it's a good way of keeping the people down. It's a very authoritarian state. You might say that China, for example, is more authoritarian than communist. That's not a view. No, that's not my view. That is a view. Maybe it's my view. That's up to you to decide. Um, and, but even to deal today, there's a lot of economic inequality in China. That's just a statement. I don't know. I don't know. I used to written down here. I don't know where this thing comes from, all right? But one thing that is before the 90s is that China used to be a very, very communist state. Well, the Mao Zedong. <laughs> and since then, you might notice that it's become less and less communist. The Communist Party of China seems less and less communist, as I just said. So some might say that Xi Jinping is a revival of Mao, and that it's been, China has not been changing for about 40 years. But all of a sudden, new guy, he's ruling for more than um, for more than ten years. He's gonna change everything. Maybe he could be. I don't know. This filmed on the twenty second of November, twenty twenty three. Maybe he does. I don't know. Okay, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, there's no end card, it's just Mao. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Yeah, Michael. So like you talked about the start about like communist Yeah. What's the difference between his communist? Well, okay, oh, uh, I went over something, thank you for asking, is that they don't really call it, they, they call it communism, but what they call it in China is a communism with Chinese characteristics. Basically, it's our version of communism, we're going to do Eastern capitalist stuff. Yeah. Juro, any questions? Any questions, Juro? I'm thinking about the questions. Any, any questions? <laughs> okay. Activity done. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, whoever's watching this. Hang on. I just like to say the goal of this session was to show the past failures and the current failures and the future failures of the communist system, which is why we are so thankful, grateful, and empowered to embark on a capitalist I journey towards democracy and liberalism. This has been to learn from the mistakes from the past. Satayanya said that you have to learn from the history to not repeat the same mistakes. That was Thank you very much, and see you all next week.